Hey everyone, welcome to my short astro update for the month of August. It's been such a mega busy month for me, seven days a week actually, clients, healing sessions, readings and there's more to boot. I've needed to relax these last couple of days because I've really felt the Mercury retrograde which starts in August is actually already started. It feels like it so much but the energy does start a couple of weeks before. I feel all of you will need to do some of that relaxation and meditation that I've been doing as well. So for the month ahead to help your mind drift off whilst I tell you more of the shenanigans of August and the planets that are affecting you and more about Mercury retrograde, I have some lovely, peaceful, nature-type footages to help you relax. It's great to have you. It's a month to really take care with all aspects of life. There's a reason. Because there's a Mercury retrograde, which is a more powerful one than usual. I assure you, because it's in one of Mercury's signs that it governs. For each of you, for each star sign that is, the retrograde is affecting different areas. So I'm going to make it easy for you, or a little bit easy, to let you know which areas are affected for each astrological sign. For, for example, if you're a Virgo, what areas are most affected by the retrograde as opposed to Libra? So those areas are the areas where you've got to take a lot of care, tread carefully within those sectors. So first, hello August, the month of the fixed fire sign of Leo, where the sun travels through Leo till the 22nd and then enters the mutable earth sign of Virgo. And in any traditional tarot pack, if you're looking for a timing, Leo in August is shown as a strength card. So it's a month to be cautious and there's a need to relax, meditate and just get on with the day to day because Mega Mercury is reversing in a sign that it rules from the fifth. So it's a stronger energy when a planet reverses in its home sign. The attributes of that planet is in reverse, even more so as in its, in its uh, retrograde energies, it brings us a stronger negative vibe of the retrograde. So this wet planet, when it's going forward, usually brings us great aspects of the following. A logical and intelligent mind helps us to be focused, directed, swift in our everyday ongoings, sharpens our communication, whether written, spoken, body language, and lends to business, computers, phones, or media stuff, travel, and timing is usually on point. With Mercury in reverse, for many of us, the positive areas I've mentioned become kind of in reverse as well. For example, there will be miscommunication, a scattered mind, the past could pop up, thoughts can go backwards to negative stuff of the past. Be careful because all this can spark arguments, disagreements and misunderstandings. So this retrograde starts in Virgo on the 5th. So the signs that are most affected by this retrograde are the signs that Virgo rules, the house that Virgo rules, which I'll tell you more about in a minute, and the sign that it travels backwards into. Firstly, Virgo's affected because it starts its retrograde on the 5th in Virgo. So that will be your first house, Virgo, which is your image, how the world sees you, what you project as who you are. Mercury rules Gemini as well. So therefore it affects Gemini a great deal, affecting areas of the home, the family, the father figure and your sense of security. Then from the 15th, when it goes back a sign, this will affect your areas of communication. Now, that is a house that Mercury governs. So areas of communication, your timing and your learning areas all are affected and your sense of uh, learning new things is kind of hindered. Then it enters Leo on the 15th, but starts the retrograde on the 5th in areas of money, wealth, gift, finances. So watch those purse strings from the 5th to the 15th. And then from the 15th, it enters your sign, Leo, affecting your image or outwardly presentation to the world. Aries, Mercury starts a retrograde in your house of work, everyday ongoings. And then from the 15th, it enters your house of fun, enjoyment, recreation, and going on to Taurus, Mercury starts a retrograde from the 5th in your house 
of enjoyment, fun, romance. And then from the 15th, it enters your areas of security, home and the family. Cancerians, you're affected a little bit more because this is a house that Mercury governs, the house of communication, your immediate environment and siblings. And then from the 15th, watch out for that money slipping through your fingers because it enters your house of money and finances. Libra, areas of the hidden mind, secrets, lies, the unseen might come out. And then on the 15th, Mercury retrograde goes into your areas of friendships and group connections. Scorpio, friendships, group connections from the 5th onwards. And then from the 15th, it goes in to throw a spanner in the works with career, reputation and your ambitions. Sagittarius, ambitions, reputation and areas of uh, career. And then from the 15th, learning, development, your spiritual pathway, and your spiritual learning. Capricorn, learning, development, spiritual awakening, spiritual learning. And then from the 15th onwards, areas of sexuality, shared money, inheritances, and taxes. Aquarius starts a retrograde in areas of sexuality, shared money inheritances and taxes and then from the 15th your relationships might be getting a bit of a kicking so watch out for arguments in your relationships areas pisces starts retrograding in relationships and then from the 15th it's areas of daily work health and everyday routines so each of those areas for each star sign could bring bumps in the road communication problems, misunderstandings, arguments. What you need to do is take care to avoid this. And each and every one of us has to do that differently. And each and every one of us will be affected differently. Mercury can for us bring the past back, whether it's in our thoughts, people of the past could pop back in, but past relationships reignited in a Mercury retrograde or Venus retrograde never last. So be careful with exes coming back. My rules for retrogrades never fail, and that is simply get on with the day-to-day. Do not start anything absolutely brand new. Get on with what has already been started before the retrograde, and don't start any new relationships, and don't start back with exes in a Mercury retrograde because it doesn't work. I've tried and tested that one just for fun. And you'll be glad to know Mercury starts to move forward on the 28th. And slowly, over a week after that, we have a settling of our lives, our mind, our thoughts, and all other areas that may have been thrown up in the air tend to land in the right place. And life starts to move forward. So if you need a boost or more on where life is going for you or anything that's on your mind and you want some greater insight, get in touch with me. Book a reading by going to skysilverstone.com. Across the top bar, just go to the reading section. Book in with me and we can go into detail with whatever is going on in your life at the moment. So take care this month and be careful with communication, travels and timings. Lastly, there's a Leo new moon on the 4th and Aquarius full moon on the 19th. So any cleansing and clearing to make you spiritually sharper and cleaner should be done before the 4th. And then from the 4th, from the new moon, there is an expansion of energies to be used, that can be used rather, for cosmic ordering, intention setting, affirmations, mantras that really work well in the expansion stage of the moon, which is from the 4th to the 19th full moon. Have a great month. It's been lovely chatting with you. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and I hope you do get time to relax and meditate. Have fun and enjoy August. Bye for now.